Hi everyone, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, my apologies for being a little late, but at least you had a great weekend of studying microbial physiology. Um, I hope this section, this review session will help you to do your best. To all, for all of you, I really hope that you will all get 100% of the exam. It's not hard, I, at least I believe it's not. Marie, I consulted with Marisa, she said it's not hard, so I believe her. Uh, so again, please consider that I cannot tell you what will be on the exam, but I can give you hints and I can direct you, but that still doesn't mean that you should study only what I told you. Although you do have only a few more hours till the exam starts. Um, so the exam is going to be divided in three sections. Uh, section one will be questions one to 20, which will be multiple choice, and each of them will be three marks, which means you can get 60 points only for answering correct on all 20 questions for the multiple choices. While section two uh, will be question 20 that uh, has uh, options A, B, C, and D. Uh, each of them will be five marks and you have to answer all of them. While for section three, which will be question one, you will have options A to G, which means you will choose only one to answer, which will be 20 marks. Consider that the one that is 20 marks really means that you have to write all possible details and to uh, involve critical thinking because it's 20 marks. So this is a question for advanced students who really want to get A and A+. Plus. And now let's go through sections. So uh, multiple choice. What would you have to pay attention is, as usual, differences between penicillin and vancomycin. So pay attention to what is the target. There is one specific target. However, there is a different mechanism of action for that target. So know very well to define that difference. Uh, second one, uh, pay attention to molecules that we talked about. We briefly mentioned them. They create those molecules that create openings in cell wall, uh, making a space for new insertions and uh, their control. Remember, we talked about tightly controlled mechanism. Uh, actually, not specifically mechanism, but know those molecules and how are they controlled. Uh, LPS and cell wall biosynthesis mechanisms, what are similarities, what are differences? So we specifically talked about the role of bactoprenal phosphate uh, in microbial cell, what is it doing, what it is not doing. And again, compare LPS and cell wall biosynthesis mechanisms and know how to distinguish them. Uh, then, I mean, E and D and FTSD roles, of course, like what each of them is doing, which one is building division, which one is building oscillations. And uh, you remember those uh, mutants, I mean, E, D, and FTSZ, those mutant phen phenotypes, we had them in one slide, so know how to describe each of them and what are differences. We talk about chemostat and uh, what means low, what means high dilution rate, which one is good, which one is not, and what's happening in each of them, like different scenarios. Then when we talk about chemotaxis, know what is the condition of methylation and phosphorylation when there is attractant and there is no attractant, and pay attention, specific attention on what kinases and phosphatases are doing. So kinases will increase phosphorylation and phosphatases are increase dephosphorylation. So kinases and phosphatases are doing opposite. In terms of fatty acid biosynthesis, uh, we talked about that specific pathway where we had carboxylation, condensation, and dehydration and reduction. So pay attention on the order of the enzymes, specifically on reductions, like when is happening which reduction, reduction. You have two of them, and one of them is specifically important for antibiotic target. Then four ways of proton motive force generation. So we talked about um, four ways uh, like uh, redox loop, direct translocation. Mm, we talked about all of them and uh, like accumulation of positive ions uh, on one side of the membrane. Uh, so that's what those all four of them you have to know. Then uh, unsaturated fatty acid synthesis. So how is that different between uh, uh, saturated fatty acid synthesis? So specifically cis trans bond. So when is cis, when is trans? Uh, then co-translational versus post-translational translocation. What are key differences between them? Uh, and uh, which molecules have the same 
function, just they are called differently in co-translational versus co-translational. And energy type that is used for co-translational and post-translational translocation, for example, which one is using ATP, which one is using PMF, etc. etc. Next, um, uh, pay attention to specific secretion systems. Uh, so some of them transport only proteins, but some of them are transporting something else. So pay attention to that. And um, uh, determine the role, know the role of ribosomal sites in stringent response initiation and why is that specific site important. In terms of sporulation, know the role of CODs Y, GTP, and SDA, as well as Pol A and F factors, like which one is phosphorylated, which one is not, and which one is active, which one is not. Uh, then bacterial adaptations of pH on pH changing, pumping of ions, and the role of specific ions, like pumping of protons and hydroxyl ions, and the role of other ions. Remember, we talked about potassium and sodium, each of them has different roles. And how is uh, how is fatty acid structure changed uh, in the specific uh, pH adaptations? There is one specific change that we talked about. Uh, then uh, section two questions. The question twenty A, B, C, and D. Again, you have to describe them uh, in one to two sentences. It's five marks each, so it's not detailed. You will have to. Uh, right in the space provided. So uh, some hints that I can give you is know how to describe ND5 gram-negative landmarks. We talked about what is gram-negative cell uh, wall uh, landmark, actually more structural landmark. Motility structures, we talked about a few of them, flagellum, archelum type 4, so know how to describe and define each of them. And bacterial cytoskeleton proteins, crescentin, MRE, B, and FTSZ, so define, describe, and compare to eukaryotic cytoskeleton proteins. Uh, in terms of the, the question that is, so I'm expecting you to write a lot, so I'm giving you one full page to write. So just a few hints, again, I can't really tell you, but you have to choose only one that you like and you describe that one. Adaptations of neutrophils, an example, uh, stringent response, serial A or and spot T, specific uh, regulation, toxin excretions. So we talked about a few of them, two of them specifically are very important. I won't tell you which one, but it's about toxins and I gave you an example. A uh, mechanism of actions of antibiotics, uh, um, so you need to compare and describe. So remember, we talked about vancomycin and penicillin and isoniazid, triclosan, and plantensimicin. And the ion-specific to component signal, we had a few, but one specifically was described um, at the end of our unit. So uh, make sure to understand that ion-specific to component signal system. Again, two-component signal system is very important. We know that there is autophosphorylation on the membrane component of histidine, which leads to phosphorylation of aspartate on this pulse regulator, but connect that with specific ions. And that would be all from uh, me. Uh, I hope you will do a great job in exam and uh, see you tomorrow at 11. Bye-bye.